morning, everyone. We have um, our devotion this morning. We'd like you to be welcome, either in Kenya, outside Kenya, every other nation. You're welcome for our morning devotion this morning. I'm Pastor Jackson Cheres, Deliverance Church of Moja. Uh, this particular day, we'd like to encourage you in a prayer as we begin. Um, either you have done your exams and you have finished, probably you are in class 8 and class 6, and you have done your exams, so we'd like to encourage you to relax. You don't need to worry, you don't need to get into a place where you want to look at whether you did well or you did not do well. Relax and wait for the results. And for those who are going on, like Form 4, we want to encourage you this morning, even with a prayer, and the parents and the guardians and everybody else. So let's pray this, uh, let me pray for you this morning and pray for our, all of us. Our Father, we want to thank you this morning that we have another time to call on your name. And we believe that, Jehovah, what you have done for us, we cannot even have a word. We don't know what to, how to thank you, but we really appreciate. And so this morning, we want to pray that, God, may you come through for those candidates who are still doing their exams. And for those who have already done, let them have their good time as they wait for the results. Pray for the parents, the guardians. Pray, Lord, for people across in this nation, outside this nation. We declare blessings upon each and every single person this morning. And we pray for grace. For this day will be better than yesterday. It will be a good day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Um, as I said, my name is Pastor Jackson Cheres. I'm taking you through this devotion this morning. And you're coming to a place where we are concluding. Uh, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, Friday. And I'm talking about what shall we do as the righteous? What shall the righteous do? Or what can I do when things go wrong? For example, in life, there are times when you are so much, um, you have a lot of faith. You know very well that things will go the right way. You don't, even any, you don't have any doubt that whatever you have put in place, you will succeed. And even at times, there are people who go to a bank and they ask for loan. You have asked for 10 million, 20 million. And this is not the first time because you have done it before and you are able to pay. But this time around, things go wrong. And you are about to lose everything that you have been able to invest on. And sometimes you wonder, as a Christian or as a righteous person, or even when you are not a Christian, you want to be a, be a believer, what shall you do? What shall I do in such a situation? And I gave an example of you are a widow. And every, or even a widower, you see. And whatever things you, you are able to look for between you and your wife, there are people who are interested in that. And they would like to take those things away from you. What shall I do? What shall you do? What can I do? It is, this is a question whereby you ask because you cannot remain the way things have been when something else has happened. If you lost your husband, you lost your wife, there is a change. There is something, dimensions, things changes. But then, what shall I do? So we want to use an example in the scripture, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 18. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18. And this is a story of a, a woman who was barren and got a baby or got a son. And so the scripture is talking about this son. And this is the, the, what the scripture says in verse 18. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to, the, to his father to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on his knees, uh, he, sat, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. I want just to pause there for a minute and get this scenario. And that is how sometimes you find that um, there are situations where men 
at times find themselves in a challenge and they, they realize that the, the matter will be in the best place to handle. So we're not in any way saying this man did the wrong thing or he did the right thing, we don't know. But all we know is that the child was brought to the mother because the child was sick. And the Bible says, at noon, the child died. And this child died while the mother was holding him on her knees. You know, look at that situation, it's so traumatizing. But then look at this woman, what she did. And she went up, that's verse 21. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Shut the door upon him and went out. Then he called to her husband and said, Please send me, send, send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then he, she settled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward to not uh, slacken the pace for me. This is a story of a woman who is saying it is well when the child has already passed on and even the husband is not aware and the child has been put on the bed of the man of God. I want you to see a picture of somebody who realizes that the way to handle this situation, I am going to take it to a place where I know it is an altar. And this is an altar of God. This is a place where I know because they built a, a room and they put a bed and they say this place will belong to a man of God. So in that home, there was a place set aside that was meant to be a room that Elisha will come and be able to spend time to, there with his servant. So this particular time when this child passed on, this woman did not take the child to their bedroom. She did not take the child, to the child to the living room. She took the child to the bed that belonged to a servant of God. And I want to tell you this, that this was a very desperate situation whereby the child died while the mother was holding him. And that looks like sometime it could be, probably she would have started just shouting and throw the child down and probably shout for the neighbors to come. But she decided, me, I am going to look for the servant of God. And for sure, the story is so long, but I want you to be, uh, to be aware that this same child who died rose up again. The child was raised up again. The child was able to be given back to the mother again. And so when you see, when you read this scripture, let me give you the final part of this story. Uh, we're still reading verse 24, uh, verse 25 now. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Camel. And I want to jump to verse 26. This is now El Elisha talking to Kehazi and said, and he called Kehazi and said, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her. And when she came in to him, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, fell at the feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. What a wonderful story. Well, I was reading for you verse 24. Let me read in full. Then she settled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. Now, look at this situation. This is a woman who has lost a child. She was still focused that even though the child has died, she knew very well that I will run to the man of God and the man of God came to the house and the man of God was able to, 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 to plead on behalf of this lady and the child came back to life. I want us to ask those, the same question we are asking. What shall you do if you are in that situation like this woman? What shall I do if I was in a situation like this woman? 
And let us learn from this scripture that it is possible to be able to stay calm. You have to be comfort, I mean, you have to comfort yourself in the Lord and remain focused and don't lose, don't get into a place where you just decide to shout, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go. You, don't, you got to know that the best place to run to is to God. You better even run to church or run to a man of God and say, I need prayer. Let us join together and believe God for a miracle in the situation that you are in. And probably we are not talking about this woman alone as a tour. This may not happen to you, but something else could have happened to you. And there is something you are wondering. Probably there is sickness that has come to you. You have been diagnosed with cancer. You have been diagnosed with HIV and AIDS. You have an issue with uh, probably pre breast cancer or even we're talking about diabetes. And there are things which happen. Or you're handling a bereavement. You are bereaved because somebody in the family has died. And you are in a situation whereby if you are not going to be careful, we can say you are in a dark moment. And in such a dark moment, you can make, either you make the right decisions or you make the wrong decisions. So when you look at this, we are saying, in the event that you get into such a situation and you have been diagnosed with illness that has no cure, only it has some way of managing it, please don't lose your mind. Don't lose your hold. Hold. Continue to hold on God. Continue to believe in God. Continue to look unto God. Continue to come to church on Sunday. Continue to go to a fellowship on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Go to a fellowship. Get to a place where you say, in all these things that have happened, I will not disappoint my God. I will go to him. Whether I am happy or I am not, I will remain in God. That is our challenge for this week that no matter what happens in this life, let us always run to God. Let us always run to church and be in a place of prayer, either on Sunday or in a fellowship or even in a Bible study, in a Bible marathon. Be there. Listen to the word of God. You will be encouraged. And that is what will happen to you whenever you realize that things have gone the wrong way. So what shall I do? I will remain in God. What shall I do? I will run to God. What shall I do? I will remain in the church. I will remain in the fellowship. I will never abandon my God, no matter what happens in this life. So let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we are challenged by the story I've just read, that this woman will say it is well when everything was not well. But because she believed that she would go to a man of God and things would change, everything changed and the child came back to life. This is our prayer, Lord, that even if somebody has been diagnosed with cancer, they will never run away from you, and you can bring healing. It doesn't matter the situation, could be a bereavement, you can bring comfort. And in the same comfort, you can help the person to remain focused and be able to continue with life. So we thank you, Lord, because you are doing something new this day, and even this week. May this uh, weekend be the best weekend. May the coming week be the best week. May you bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I want to pray with another category of people. You are saying, I have not yet given my life to Jesus. So pray with me this prayer. Say, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I come to you as I am. Please forgive me all my sins. I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. I confess all of them to you today and write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray with me that prayer, then you are now saved. Kindly write to us through the numbers on the screen. We'll be able to get back to you and God will bless you. So we want to thank you for listening to me all through the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, Friday. God bless you. Have a good day. May you have a good weekend. 
and may you remember to go to church wherever you are, the location where you are in. If you are close to us, you are welcome to be with us on Sunday services from first service, second and third service. We're having our first service seven, and that second service 9.30 and third service at 12 noon on Sunday. So God bless you and may you have a good day. I'm Pastor Jackson Cheres, Reverend Church Moja. Be blessed.